Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for waiting. We are delighted to have you all here. We are now ready to resume our seminar program for this NAC breakout speaking track. We'd like to invite Mr. Yuji Azamo, Mr. Genshin Man, Ms. Yuiko Takada, Mr. Hidekazu Nakamura, Mr. Motohiro Otsuka, and Mr. Masayuki Igawa to talk about OpenStack traps of developments and use cases. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to our session. So this session is uh, OpenStack traps of development and use cases. So and uh, what? Sorry. Uh, this is this uh, this session is lightning talks, and uh, we will talk about uh, NEC uh, about NEC developers and the users will talk about traps, not only OpenStack development but also uh, experiment of class construction and operation. So the the individual sessions are limited. To to up to five minutes. So a session will be about it if it will be over five minutes. And uh, I will ring the bell like this. That the uh, signal, the session is uh, ended, it's time. So the speakers are Yuji Azama, Ganshan Man, Yuiko Takada, Hidekazu Nakamura, and Motohiro Otsuka. So, the first session is uh, Yuji Azama. Please talk about that. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Yuji Azama. Today, I'm going to talk about trial and error of SFC on OpenStack. This is what I will be presenting today. <clears throat> I work for NEC Solution Innovators and belong to Okinawa Open Laboratory team in NEC. The Okinawa Open Laboratory is research and development organization of SDN and Cloud. We have been researching SFC on our test bed since 2014. I'd like to deploy service function chaining on OpenStack. 
However, it isn't being established yet. So I tried, I tried several ways. I introduced outlines of two ways from among them. At first, we tried to use current neutron network model. All SFs are connected to patch VM. Patch VM is a Nova VM that have an open V switch. SFC is controlled by patch VM. Patch VM and SFs connect to C plane network. An operator configures SFC via SFC manager using Ansible. However, this way is having complicated points. We need many steps for the de deployment and configuration. Moreover, this way is consumed many resources. Network and port are consumed in proportion to just number of service function. These problems were serious than I thought. Then we thought we can be simple more. The trial two solved problems of trial one. We added a new API that called forwarding rule. An operator can control SFC by this API. And each SS are connected just one network. Forwarding rule consisted of forwarding rule resource and classifier resource. This is implementation of forwarding rule extension. BRint is uh, integration bridge of Neutron. We insert a BR patch between BRint and SFs. An operator can control SFC by Neutron API. I thought trial two is good idea so I proposed as uh, forwarding rule to the community. This is my first time contribution. I'm very excited. Uh, however, it's abandoned. This is because community already had some similar specs. For instance, API for service chaining, traffic steering, and so on. I should have an interest in the community trends. Currently, the concept of forwarding rule was separated to forwarding rule spec and common classifier spec. However, forwarding rule spec already abandoned because networking SSC sub-project has launched. Common classifier will be used to various services. For instance, service, uh, security group, QoS, networking SFC, and so on. If you're interested in SFC or common crash fire, uh, please review my spec. Thank you for your time. Next speaker is Bansan. Hello everyone, thanks for coming here. So I'll be talking about here about the OpenStack activity and how they are different uh, from the proprietary software development. So let's start. So this is the agenda for my PPT. Uh, I'll be talking about OpenStack activity I'm doing in Tempest and NOAA and the differences between uh, open source and the proprietary software development, like first open stack project, new to cloud domain, time zone, et cetera. So I'm a Ghansiam man, so software developer from NEC, so I'm in community since 2012. I'm a core developer of Tempest and uh, active contributor in NOAA. So let's start about my open stack activity. So this is the Tempest one. So I started with improving the test coverage of compute APIs and uh, then implementation of response JSON schemas, then service client improvements 
and normal activities like reviews and bug tries. These are the NOAA activities. I contributed in NOAA v2.0 APIs, which are current now. And I participated in NOAA micro version design, helped the functional test improvement, and uh, improving the NOAA API using micro version and APIs doc, which is the highest priority in this Mithaka release. So let's start the differences. So when I joined this uh, OpenStack uh, development, this was my first open source project. So previously I worked in uh, proprietary projects uh, and like uh, uh, before OpenStack, I heard about open source thing, but I have never worked or never explored those things, what actually open source is and how uh, community get involved in their developments. And uh, I was unfamiliar with how open source community works. Like big challenge for me in OpenStack was that only. And there are a lot of people from different time zone, from different organization, and they work closely. So how they coordinate with each other, how they get the conclusion about design, implementation, planning. Because if you have a lot of people from different uh, thoughts, so you have a lot of thoughts and it's very difficult to have the conclusion. So which way you want to go? So those were the question in my mind. So how things helped here? So I worked with OpenStack experienced developer from NEC, like we have all here, and uh, from other organization also. And uh, so there I just got the answer from those questions, how they coordinate with each other and how different time zone people work together. And uh, next I found like PTL and the submit plays very important role in project to get the conclusion of each development cycle. So for example, in this Mitaka release, every project's PTL and their team will get together. So they'll have the design session of each feature. They will discuss and they will get the conclusion. They will have the planning where to develop, how, who will develop, and uh, in which release they have to fix. So these two things play a very important role. And next is project team coordination, like with the weekly meeting, IRC chatting, or mailing list. Uh, through those, they coordinate with each other, even with the different time zones. So we have alternate meeting with the, like Asia specific time zone or US specific time zone. And uh, last but not least is OpenStack.org. They have the great wiki and the great documents there. So if you are very new, so you can get to know all these basic answer from there. So after those, I love working in open source and might be difficult for me to uh, again, work in proprietary project because open source is too much easy, you can say, and very challenging and uh, interesting to work. And next challenge was I was new to cloud domain. So I, before OpenStack, I worked in uh, storage and avionics domain. And uh, those were different from virtualization and cloud domains. So this was the one of the challenges. So how things helped here, the best learning source is working closely with other developers on code design and reviews. And the reviews is the best, I will say, to learn about any domain or how things going in that technology and the how future planning will be there. And the source code reading is the best way uh, anyways. And the, as experience goes, uh, I learn about the cloud domain. Still, I have to learn a lot. I mean. I'll say that's just a starting for me. And next big challenge is time zone, which is, I think, the biggest issue while working in open source. And uh, pe because people from different time zone find it difficult to coordinate with each other, like in Japan, we work in this uh, GMT plus nine, and US people works when we are sleeping. So it's difficult if we want to talk or discuss with them something. So that is the biggest challenge. And uh, OK, so we'll just finish. So these are the time things. We just uh, finish with the IRC things and all. And uh, next time management, how we faced and we worked with these like morning reviews and all. So this is all summary. That's all from my side. So let's uh, call Nakamura-san here. Thank you very much. Hello, hmm? I'm Hidekazu Nakamura. Uh, I have been working on projects related to construct years using OpenStack since SX release. 
uh, I was aware of open source community for the first time. OpenStack Summit has finally held in Japan. So let's go back to my first OpenStack Summit. Thankfully, I attended OpenStack Summit Grizzly. I'm overwhelmed by beautiful San Diego and the number of developers. Have you ever been to San Diego? <laughs> no? <laughs> uh, many developers are talking with each other in English. But I realized the fact that developers are the same human beings as me, of course as you. Community is composed of the same human beings as me. I try to post a patch to community. My patch is to remove only single slash from default input value, uh, but merged. Status merged encouraged me very much. Since then, I contributed some patches. So, many Japanese developers are coming to the summit. My prediction, the number of committers in Japan will be double. They must be, be going to commit to OpenStack after the summit. Next, talk about issue. Uh, I ran performance test put 50 VMs almost at the same time. Several company has explained tuning parameter at events, but I couldn't understand which parameter combination were valid to our environment. So at first, we executed all default value, but at most, 15 VMs could be booted. So solution, uh, we repeatedly tuned by referring to parameter value, which is explained at OpenStack events for three weeks. Not only tuning, we added Neutron API node because RPC worker does not implement it in Grizzly release. And finally, we got it. Uh, parameters listed here are for memories. These values are valid for Grizzly only. I mentioned about Grizzly release, but now Nova and Neutron are synchronized. Neutron implemented RPC worker processes and much faster, so I don't test, but I believe solution is upgrading OpenStack. Finally, lesson to learn, OpenStack community is open. Community is composed of developers like us. Oh, I missed. <laughs> integrator, I missed the integrator. <laughs> A contribution process is well documented. And there is upstream training for new contributors. I attended upstream training before the summit. It's good. And there are reliable resources about OpenStack. Many events related to OpenStack is held, are held. We can get real examples about not only development, but operation. That's all, thank you. Uh, next speaker, Yuiko Takada.
Hi, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start my presentation. The title is Diversity of OSS Community. Then, uh, at first, I will introduce myself. Um, my name is Yuiko Takada, and uh, I'm a software developer at NEC, and I'm working for OpenStack. And uh, also, I'm contributing to Ironic and the Ironic Inspector project. And then I'm a core developer of Ironic Inspector project. Then, uh, have you ever posted a patch to the community? If you have ever posted a patch, as you know, there are a huge number of patches which are waiting for being merged to the community. And also, uh, as you know, sometimes it is very difficult uh, that your patch will be merged into the community, right? And then uh, I'd like to introduce my experience when the, the importance of my patch was not understood correctly. Uh, one day, uh, I tried to use Ironic on Japanese OS, but it failed. The error log is like that. The reason was, as you can see, ASCII codec error. Some message catalog of Linux are translated to many languages, and this error was occurred because Ironic doesn't use standard locale. And then uh, I posted a patch to fix this bug. My solution for this bug was use standard locale for all Linux commands. The reason is that currently message of just one command is translated to Japanese, but someday many more messages will be translated, no doubt. In this case, uh, every time ironic fails because of this error, we have to fix uh, it every time so that it's so ridiculous, right? But my idea was not approved. Sorry. Uh, because people in community was afraid that by changing standard locale, something will be broken. But I think that uh, if there are people from many countries in the community, they can understand my idea correctly. And some issues similar to my experience of course uh, is the same as Mansan said. So that for example, time zone issue, uh, most meetings are US or Europe time zone centered, right? And also we are facing a language issue. Uh, in OpenStack community, meetings are held on IRC, and the design summit is held as face-to-face -face conversation. It is very difficult for non-English native people. These issues I introduced will not be noticed or resolved unless people who have trouble insist on. Uh, listen, uh, diversity will be developed by people from many countries will join to the community. So that everyone, let's join OpenStack community and uh, let's make OpenStack better. Uh, that's all, thank you. Uh, next speaker is Motohiro Otsuka. Hi all, and uh, welcome to our LT, LT session. It's very difficult to come here, so thanks for your effort to come. <laughs> so today, I'll introduce about develop magnum with traps and difficulty from NEC. Agenda is here. Uh, the first, Introduction. Uh, who am I? I'm not sure who am I, but I only know I'm. My name is Motohiro Otsuka, known as Yen Yin, on OpenStack IRC channel and Twitter and GitHub. 
and developer from NEC Solution Innovator. And also, uh, the, I'm a core developer on Magnum project until last day of last year. Do you know Magnum? Maybe not, eh? so, right? <laughs> so, Magnum project is known as <laughs> container as a service. Eh? Uh, but actually, Magnum is an installation service of an um, open stack project uh, like Toroop. So Magnum is responsible for installation, Kubernetes, and man managing, uh, managing Kubernetes and life cycle of uh, the Kubernetes or, and Docker Swarm. Uh, hi. <laughs> Only recently, we have released a uh, Liberty version of Magna. But during developing, we came across a lot of difficulty and traps. At the previous summit in Vancouver, a PTL on Magnum project said that Magnum will become a production ready state. But that time, Magnum was a very, 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 very immature state. So uh, I'm, very, I'm, com I'm confused. It's really, really? Uh, in the first place, Kubernetes instance, which is installed by Magnum, doesn't have authentication. It means that uh, not only tenant user, but also anyone can use uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes instance, which is installed by Magnum. So I say, can you use Magnum in your production environment? <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, Kubernetes uses TLS, TLS authentication to authenticate the user. The works that was given to us was implementing TLS support in Magnum project. Initially, we are thinking it's very easy to implement. Magnum uses heat template set to set up Kubernetes, Kubernetes instance. So, uh, we believe that complete all a fixed heat template. But we forgot about client side. TLS client authentication is required client certificates, which is certificated by same certificate authority. Heat can't provide client certificate to user. With that manner, we decided that client certificate is generated on the Kubernetes node. It means server side. Uh, I missed uh, my script position. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> uh, to, Kubernetes, node in, uh, to, Kubernetes, Kubernetes node generates a client certificate and the user can get a client certificate from uh, Kubernetes node <laughs> using SSH. <laughs> very... Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, to, we, we have a lot of troubles. Uh, to, the most <laughs> mainly trouble is uh, my colleague was uh, migrate. Uh, <laughs> my colleague was uh, uh, tr uh, tr moved to, move to, uh, move to other company. <laughs> she was uh, mainly implementing this feature, <laughs> so very. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to uh, us to implementing this. 
But finally, we implementing this. So please use Magnum and judge. Judge, you can use this. Uh, you can use Magnum in your production environment. Thanks. Oh, that's all. Thank you very much. This is the, uh, it's the end of the this session. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please talk after the, this session. Thank you very much. <laughs>